Hey there folks. So just gonna do a uh, quickie here because I was cleaning up, found a cart that I bought, totally forgot about. Uh, so what this is, this is a flash cart from Inside Gadgets. I honestly don't know if he even sells it anymore. I've had this thing such a long time and the uh, new product rate is uh, somewhat high and I don't know that he's still selling the DIY stuff. But anyway, this I purchased from Inside Gadgets as is. Uh, this was a DIY version of their uh, EEPROM GBA flash cart. Now, I already have dozens, dozens of flash carts that I use uh, as an AGS aging ROM. Uh, this one included, I already have it flashed over. You pop, for those that are unaware, if you take the AGS aging ROM, pop it on a flash cart, and then pop it into GBA, uh, it automatically boots up into this aging test, uh, which is... Nintendo's hardware checker. Uh, so it'll run various tests on memory, LCD, timer, DMA, com, key in input, uh, and interrupts. And it's going to do a test on the actual silicon in the Game Boy itself. And a healthy Game Boy should pass all of this with flying colors. And then there is a bit of a stress test that runs. Um, here's some sound too. And it it's useful in its default form for... Uh, like troubleshooting a Game Boy that's not booting games or something like that. Uh, but if you power your Game Boy off, hold LNR and then power it back on, uh, the aging ROM has a little bit of extra functionality. It boots into this menu here where we have, uh, we can select individual tests or even a key input test. Um, and it's really handy for checking like, you know, are all the buttons on your Game Boy working? Can you press multiple diagonals at the same time? Which I can't on this hardware unless I like flex the button, but it'll show you if you're able to do that. Um, good for diagnosing shoulder buttons and such, even though you could just pop in like a GBC game and then, you know, flip them back and forth between widescreen and standard aspect ratio. But the whole point of this, uh, if we go into the configuration menu, you can see I can set different uh, settings in this thing. So the target is the startup behavior. Instead of booting into the aging test, we could do the key input test or just boot straight to the menu. Uh, but here's what I want to show. If we hit A, it's going to say EEPROM not available. Now, if you run this game, this ROM off of a flash cart, you will have to manually override the save ROM because it's just not going to be detected properly. Um, I know that the easy flash is doing this and i'm pretty sure that the everdrive does it too you have to manually override to the 4k eprom uh, but we shouldn't have to manually override with this flash card and before anyone says it i know trust me i know there are other flash cards out there uh you can get not just the inside gadgets flash cards but retro stage is making gba flash cards now they're pretty decent the problem is these use FRAM, FRAM, which kinda, kinda works. All right, if we jam this into my Game Boy, boot it up. I'm not holding the L and R buttons, as you can see. It still boots up to the menu. That's because I've taken the ROM and I've patched it to work with FRAM, which totally viable option. Um, Inside Gadgets also has those. I did a video on one of those a while back. Um, I have no idea what stock's looking like right now. In 2022, it's a total crapshoot. Um, but both of those are options if you don't mind patching your ROM. This, however, is an unpatched ROM, and it actually has two switches on the motherboard and two spots for uh, memory modules. So I only have a 4K donor right now. I don't have a 64K module to pop on here, um, but... For what I plan on using this for, 4K should be fine. Uh, it is worth noting that 4K and 64K are not interchangeable. Uh, I'm fairly certain the wiring and such is like the same, the pinout and such, uh, but that's not the point. The games are programmed to use a specific save type, and if you don't use that save type, then it's not going to work, hence why it was giving me that EEPROM error. So this donor is... Um, I forget specifically what it is. I think it's some Justice League game. If you look up the code, let me put the hot air down. If you look up the code on the ROM chip here, it's kind of hard to make out. 
it is pretty soft, but you should see AGB dash and then a four letter combo. That four letter combo is a little bit bigger up on the side here, but this particular cart is BJLE, which you Google AGB BJLE, or you pull up the uh, GBA cart database, you can see exactly what save type this uses. Uh, now, I already know it's an EEPROM type, uh, but I did have to look it up to see if it was either a 4K or a 64K game. Uh, of course, I could have also just plugged it into the GBX and done a query. But uh, I did also use this specific cart as a donor to fix a Minish cap a little while back. Uh, but anyway, all we want is the EEPROM off it. Sorry, I'm a little scatterbrained today. Been cleaning all day. Found this cart I totally forgot about. All right. Once that's off there, I'm just gonna solder this thing on by hand. It goes. If you take a look at this thing, you see there's this big circle in the casement in the lower right hand corner. You line that up with the circle on the PCB. Drop that in. Make sure it's in the 4K slot. Again, I really don't think it's too important whether you put it in the 4K or 64K, but might as well do it right. Um, and then there is a switch to select which one you want to use. Right, I'm just going to load that up with solder. And see if I can't hit all four pads at once. I think that'll be nice and clean. Oops, I messed up. Problem was not enough flux. Whatever, good enough, I can clean that up later. It's also worth noting that there is a switch to bring the ROM from 32 megabytes down to 16 megabytes, or 8 slash 16, I don't know what the difference is. Um, well, I mean, obviously once, but I don't know functionally what the difference is, uh, what it's doing electronically to differentiate between 8 and 16, but shouldn't matter. Got that on there. Pop that in here. We might have to wipe that chip. It's already set to 4K, and I don't think the 8 slash 16 chip will matter because this is only an 8 megabyte ROM that, if you trim it, shrinks down to like a mega and a half or something. But hold L and R, go to the menu. We will set that to menu. EEPROM not available. Hmm. Let's try switching that over to 8 slash 16. I think that was a problem, like the extended uh, memory required to to access the EEPROM isn't available. Like you can't use 32 megabytes and the save data at the same time, I'm not sure. Something like that. EEPROM is not available. Hmm, so it's still not working. I guess now is the part where we do a little bit of troubleshooting. That's what the GBX is for. Let me try wiping this save, and I'll be right back, because I think this has a Minish Cap save on it, despite the donor being Justice League. All right, so when I plug it in with the GBX, the GBX can erase the save data. It recognizes the chip, so... The problem might have just been that I needed to erase it. Nope, EEPROM is not available. Hmm. Switch that to 64K. If I remember correctly, one of these carts had like a backward silk screen or something. No, I still don't think that's it. Well, there you go. I have absolutely no idea what it could be because that is soldered in. It 
could just be a bad EEPROM chip. I will have to uh, double check. I'll write some save data to it and then read it back off the cart and see what I get. But unfortunately, I don't know what it is. Oh well, thanks for bearing with me. Um, uh, we'll get it next time, I guess. Have a good night. So I did my due diligence just in case, and uh, it was a uh, user error. Um, so if you recall from the original video in which I used this donor in the first place, it was a severely water damaged cart that I didn't even have working. Um, the ROM chip was fine, and I pulled the ROM chip off the original game, off this game, and then swapped it onto the donor. So I have no idea if the save ROM ever actually worked. So what I did, I went and found another game in my donor collection. Uh, this is some Dragon Ball Z game. I don't know. Um, the code is AZJJ. And it seems to work. I took the EEPROM chip off of the flash cart I just made, popped it onto this, took the EEPROM chip off this, popped it onto the flash cart, and both games seem to be working. So I don't know what exactly happened. I don't really want to play that. But once I put the, uh, EEPR the new donor in here, uh, reflashed the ROM, booted up, this is what I get. Check some error, default is saved, which is what we should be getting because there would have been no save on here for this. So now it's gonna run through its default again, which is the aging test. So we will have to restart it holding L and R. Ta-da, to get to the menu, configuration, we are going to set it to menu and we're gonna return the aging time to endless. Hit A, it saves, we can power it off. Everything's happy, game's off. Turn it on, not holding the shoulder buttons. Should boot to the menu. Ta-da! We're done! There we go. And I did actually test this with another ROM, the uh, Justice League ROM, for example. Uh, I dumped that, wrote that to here, and that was giving me the same error until I swapped the chips. Uh, once I swapped the chips, it let me play that just fine. No EEPROM error. So, I don't know what that incompatibility was about, um, but it's working now so um just make sure your donor works and shouldn't have a problem i guess but there we go uh and i did double check while i was flashing new roms to this because it does take a few minutes um alex does still sell these but they're currently out of stock eta april 2022 but who knows if that's uh if that'll happen chip shortage being what it is is what it is um but that being said if you want this for a specific game one of these flash carts uh like triple check you're getting the right one because there are certain hardware features that you'll want like if you're playing boktai for example this isn't boktai this is boktai um this one has a um photo diode in there for the solar sensor uh, it has real-time clock. I haven't installed the battery yet, but that works great. Uh, I have another one. This one uses the one megabit flash save chip, which makes it really good for um, Pokemon ROM packs in particular. So, you know, that, that sort of thing. Get what you want. Get whatever works for you. Yeah? 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 But the games work exactly as expected. Um, and now I have a dedicated uh, proper aging cartridge that I can use for testing. Uh, what I didn't like about the uh, FRAM one that I had flashed was that it's FRAM. I could use this for a uh, FRAM game. Like the other Inside Gadgets one, which I have loaded with that Metroid Fusion still because that was the... <laughs> That was the game I tested it with when I did the video, and I haven't touched it since. But now I can reflash both of these carts with FRAM games. Or any other game that I don't have a dedicated flash cart for, I can patch and put on those things, because they should work. The only thing worth considering if you're doing uh, the patch nonsense is stuff like Pokemon. 
doesn't really work that way. Pokemon is expecting one megabit worth of save data area. Uh, the FRAM games only have 256K available, so you're going to have a hard time with that. Uh, but other than that, anything 8K or, or 64K or 4K EEPROM will flash just great. Anything SRAM or FRAM native will work natively. You don't have to patch it. Um, so all that leaves you is with the Flash save games, which there really aren't that many outside of Pokemon games. Uh, counting Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, there's like six games, if that. Uh, no, counting Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, there's like ten games. Sorry, I said that backwards. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. Super neat stuff. Glad I got it working. Um, user error. User error. That's why it helps to test things before just throwing it together. But there we go. That's all I got. Thanks for watching, guys. I will throw some links in the description to this cart if you want to grab one. I bought this. This wasn't provided. I just think they're neat. Um, I will also throw a link to the Game Boy Advance cart database so you can look up your games. Again, it's that, that four-digit code plus AGB. It's on the flash chip. I think this one's easier to read. Yeah. You can see that down there, AGB-AZJJ. Search that on the database, you'll find exactly what save type it supports. Uh, if you search this specific game, you should find that it supports a 4K EEPROM, um, because that's this game. <laughs> but yeah, I already know this one uses a 4K EEPROM, but you know, good to double check, I guess. And that's all I got. Um, Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me while I bumble through this mess. And uh, I'll catch you all next time.